Well, thank you. I, I, I truly thank my friend Congressman Barr for hosting this special hour. I applaud the sentiments that he just shared. I associate myself with them and the conviction that he has. I certainly share it, and I know so many of my colleagues, at least on this side of the aisle, do as well. In 1923, there was an average middle-class family man named Roy Otis Martin who bought a rundown lumber mill in Alexandria, Louisiana. He worked hard. He established it. He expanded it. He ultimately transformed it into one of the largest economic generators for our state. This is what makes America great. This is true freedom. This is real opportunity, and it is a story that has been repeated so many countless times throughout our nation's rich history. However, many Americans, particularly our younger generation, seem to be losing hold of these values. There was a survey that just came out this past March. We all lamented the findings, 49.6%, almost 50%, of millennials and members of Generation Z responded to this poll and said that they would, quote, prefer living in a socialist country, unquote. It's shocking. Just last month, there was another poll that came out. It found that 70% of millennials say they are likely to vote socialist. 15% of millennials think they would, the world would be a better place if the Soviet Union still existed. It, only 57% of millennials believe the Declaration of Independence better guarantees freedom and, and, and equality over the Communist Manifesto. These are just shocking numbers, and they're really frightening, because it's this mindset that's the antithesis of everything that our founders fought for. What do we stand for in America? We stand for core American principles, the principles of individual freedom and limited government and the rule of law, things like peace through strength, fiscal responsibility, free markets, and human dignity. And those are all of the values that socialism steamrolls. Th those are the ideals that this country was founded on, and they have to remain the foundation for everything we do because it is central to our identity. Unfortunately now, unfortunately now more than ever, there's this false message that is uh, taking root. One that says government is better, that more government is even greater. That it, most of those running for president in 2020 on the Democrat side of the aisle are promising free health care and free education, and some are going as far as actually promising free money to every American on a monthly basis for those who put their trust in the government. The problem is the government was never intended to be our savior. Our founding fathers built this republic on strong convictions that every American is entitled to individual freedom and they should never be controlled or owned or dictated to by the government. In fact, Thomas Jefferson said the following during his first inaugural address, quote, what more is necessary to make us happy and a prosperous people? Still one thing more, fellow citizens, a wise and frugal government which shall, re which shall restrain men from injuring one another shall leave them otherwise free to regulate their own pursuits in industry and improvement and shall not take from the mouth of labor the bread it has earned. There are two competing visions for America today, and that's the bottom line. The, the contrast is becoming ever more crystal clear. You simply cannot be for individual freedom and liberty and also be for socialism. Those are mutually exclusive pursuits. You simply can't have both. Socialism is the antithesis of everything we stand for in America, beginning with our national motto, inscribed right there above the speaker's head. Do you know that socialists sneer at the motto, in God we trust? You know why? Because as social democrat termed communist hero and Soviet Union premier Vladimir Lenin explained in 1905, this is what he wrote, quote, there is nothing more abominable than religion. Every socialist is, as a rule, an atheist, unquote. Look, now's the time for us to articulate with clarity, conviction, and consistency exactly what our founders stood for, what America is for, who we are, and why we are exceptional. I, I close by just thanking again the gentleman from Kentucky for putting this special order together at such a critical hour in our nation's history. And we'll continue to fight wholeheartedly against socialism so that all Americans can have the same opportunity that our forefathers had to turn lumber mills into legacies. With that, I yield back.